Mega Garchomp is coming to Pokemon Go this weekend on Saturday, November 11th, 2023 for a raid day event from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. local time. You can check my previous video for the full event details. It's linked in the top right. I'll also put it in the description down below and it'll be linked at the end of this video. You can check it out if you need those event details. So first, let's take a look at whether it's worth actually going out for this event and raiding Mega Garchomp. And to that, I have to say a definite yes. And to explain why, let's take a look at Giga Garchad's stats. He has a base stat of 339 attack, 222 defense, 239 for stamina, and a CP of 6,132. Although we'll have to see if Niantic actually lets it go that high. They might nerf it a little bit for Pokemon Go, I'm not sure. But with those base stats, as a dragon type attacker, with Dragon Tail and Outrage, he has a DPS of 21.65, which is pretty high, making him one of the top dragon type attackers. He's also one of the top ground type attackers with mud shot and earth power, giving a DPS of 19.93. Earth power, however, is that calm day move, but thankfully, if you don't have the calm day move, earthquake as a charge move is not far behind it with a DPS of 19.4, so that's only really a difference of 0.5. So if you end up with a Garchomp that you wanna use or you are using as a ground type attacker, you don't really need to use an elite charge TM to get earth power on your Garchomp. Another reason that I think Garchomp is worth raiding this weekend is that he is essentially a budget attacker. Because he's had a calm day and he will come out in wild spawns in the future for other events, he shouldn't be that hard to power up in the future. I'm also a big fan of the shiny Mega Garchomp. His other shinies are the dull type shinies, so they don't really look a whole lot different. Mega Garchomp shiny, on the other hand, looks amazing. So good with those pinks and purples. And there will supposedly be a shiny boost for these raids. Not entirely sure how much. I have heard some people say, one in 10. Niantic has stated that it will be boosted. It's normally one in 20 from raids. So I don't know. We'll have to see how that works out. One in 10 would be amazing. That would be another good reason to go out this weekend, but I wouldn't necessarily count on that shiny boost being super high. And finally, you are getting those extra free daily raid passes. There will be a lot of Mega Garchomp raids and there will be a lot of people out doing Mega Garchomp raids, which is your best shot at getting a lot of Mega Energy so that you can Mega at least one of your Garchomp. In classic Niantic fashion, we don't know how much Mega Energy will come from each raid, my guess would be that it might be similar to Primals and Rayquaza, where it was 80 to 90, but it could be up to 250 maximum. We'll have to see. Speaking of getting as much Mega Energy as you possibly can, if you don't know, in Mega Raids, the amount of Mega Energy you get depends on how long it takes you to defeat the raid boss. You want to be able to take down the raid boss as quickly as possible to get the most amount of energy from each raid. And in order to do that, you're going to need the best possible counters. So let's take a look at the best counters for Mega Garchomp. He does have a dual typing of Ground dragon which makes him double weak to ice and weak to dragon and fairy. So to maximize your energy gains definitely throw in your top ice type attackers with ice movesets. And to find out what those are we can go to a site like gamepress.gg and look at their comprehensive DPS spreadsheet. And one of the nice things about this spreadsheet is that you can come down here you can put in your enemy information so we want to type in Mega Garchomp here and that is going to show us all the best raid attackers if we're going up against Mega Garchomp. Now once we've typed in our raid boss, we want to also check this hide unavailable box. That's going to hide any Pokemon that aren't available in Pokemon Go. When we come down here, we can see this list here. We want to sort it by ER. And basically, ER is just a ranking system that Game Press has come up with that looks at how much damage a Pokemon can do before it faints. So it takes into account not only its DPS, but also how long until it faints against the raid boss that you put in. So that's why we want to sort by ER here. This is going to give us our top attackers. Now we can see this list below, which includes our shadow and our Megas. So let's take a look at that first. We can see our number one raid attacker here is Shadow Mamoswine with Powder Snow and Avalanche, followed quickly by Mega Rayquaza, either with Dragon Tail Outrage or closely behind that Dragon Tail Breaking Swipe. And just behind Mega Rayquaza is Mega Gardevoir, with Charm and Triple Axle. Next, we've got Baxcalibur. This one, I don't know about a lot of people. I hunted for Jabax pretty hard when he first came out, and I've hatched quite a few batches of 10 kilometer eggs. I still don't really have enough candies to, to power up a Baxcalibur to be able to compete here, but if you do, by all means, this could be a good time to use them. After that, we have Shadow Weavile with Ice Shard and either Avalanche or Triple Axle. And then we have regular Mamoswine with Powder Snow Avalanche. After that, Shadow Mewtwo with Psycho Cut Ice Beam. And then in our number 
number 10 spot is Galarian Darmanitan with Ice Fang and Avalanche. So those are the top 10. If you have any of those, definitely stack them up in your party. However, some of these like Shadow Mamoswine and even Mega Rayquaza might not be available to everybody. So if you're looking for some budget counters, another thing we can do is come up here to the search bar and put exclamation mark Mega. The exclamation mark means not, so we're gonna exclude any Megas. And do our ampersand for and, exclamation mark Shadow. So now we're gonna see the list without any of our Megas and our Shadows, and this will give us some of our more budget counters. So we can see here now Baxcalibur, top of the list of no Mega, no Shadow. Regular Mamoswine, Galarian Darmanitan. Baxcalibur with the Dragon Breath Avalanche moveset. But then after that, we get into the much more common ones like Glaceon. So Glaceon with Frostbath and Avalanche or Glaceon with Ice Shard and Avalanche. And then we have our Weaviles again. Avalug, which evolves from Bergamite. So if you've caught a lot of Bergamite over the past few winter seasons, you might have a good Avalug or two. We've also got Aurorus in here, which evolves from Amara. So if you have one of those that you've been powering up, that could also work. Bear Tick is also on here pretty far down the list, but Cub Chew is spawning in the wild right now. So if you need to build something fast and on a budget, that could be a potential one. You could definitely go out and hunt those candies right now. But even if you don't have those Pokemon and you're trying to build your team, all you need to do is take a look in your collection, look at your ice types that have their ice moves, because that's going to give you Stab. Stab, if you don't know, is that same type attack bonus, which means if the attack matches the typing of the Pokemon, it does a little bit of extra damage. So you definitely want ice type Pokemon Pokemon with ice moves if possible. If not, you can move on to things like fairies. Some of the fairies get ice moves, like Togekiss has an ice fast move, and Gardevoir has that triple axle, that new ice move, as a charge move. So those can definitely work as some budget Pokemon. There's also Obama Snow, which evolves from Snover, which is pretty common in the winter months in most places. So you might also have that in your collection. Once you've looked at all your ice type Pokemon, if your party still isn't full, then take a look at your fairy types. Whichever fairy types you have powered up with fairy moves, those will also work very well against a dragon type. And finally, you can take a look at your dragon types. Now, the reason I'm putting dragon types last is because Mega Garchomp himself is a dragon type with dragon type moves. So that means if you're using a dragon, there is potential that you are gonna be taking extra damage from Mega Garchomp as well. But dragon types can also be effective. So if you have something like Salamence, which evolves from Bagon, which is pretty common nowadays, then you might wanna put that in there as well to fill out your team. Now, finally, in terms of building your team, you wanna set it up in advance. So if you're not aware, you can set up battle parties for gyms and for raids ahead of time. So if you click on the Pokeball there, you click battles, then you go to party in the top right. Scroll down a little bit. You can see where you can set up parties for gyms and raids. You can only have 10 at a time, so if you've already got 10, you might have to edit one for Mega Garchomp. But I definitely recommend that, because once you get into a lobby, then you just swipe over to your team. You don't have to go through your whole collection and pick them out and put them in the team each time. Much easier, much quicker, when we're doing a bunch of raids in a row, like on these raid days. Now let's talk about which Pokemon you might want to Mega Evolve. And there are basically two thoughts on this. You can either Mega Evolve a Pokemon so you get the most amount of candies for Mega Garchomp, or you can Mega Evolve a Pokemon that will go in your raiding party that will do the most amount of damage. If what you're looking to do is maximize your candy gains from these raids, then you're gonna wanna Mega either a Dragon type or a Ground type that you have at the highest level Mega, the higher level the Mega, the more candy boost you will get. Let's take a look at some of our options for that. That would be Mega Charizard X, Mega Ampharos, Mega Steelix, Mega Sceptile, Mega Swampert, Mega Altaria, Mega Salamence, Mega Latios or Latias, and Mega Rayquaza. Whichever one of those you have that is the highest, Mega that, and that will help you maximize your candy and your XL candy gains from the raid. If what you want to do is do the most amount of damage and take Mega Garchomp down quicker, then what you're going to want to do is Mega something that will do a lot of damage that you use in your raiding party. Some of our options for that would be again Mega Charizard X as long as he has the Dragon Breath Calm Day move and Dragon Claw Charge move. There's also Mega Gardevoir as a fairy type, Mega Obama Snow as an ice type, Mega Glalie as an ice type, and Mega Rayquaza as that dragon type. Now you'll notice Mega Rayquaza is in both of these lists and is also a top raid attacker against Mega Garchomp. So that means if you have a Mega Rayquaza at Mega level 3, that is hands down your best bet. Mega that one, no doubt about it throw it in your rating party. You're good to go no matter what your goals are for your Mega because you got both bases covered. If you're not sure which way to go, do you want to maximize candy or do you want to maximize Mega Energy? I would say definitely focus on the Mega Energy. As I said before, the candies are not going to be as hard to come by because Gibble has spawned in the wild in the past either for Calm Day or for special events and will likely do so again in the future. The candies won't be as hard to come by as the Mega Energy. You're only going to be able to get the Mega Energy from doing raids. This weekend is going to be your best chance to get a whole bunch all at once. So if you're wondering, 
I would definitely say focus on the Mega Energy. In which case, you're gonna want a Mega, whichever Pokemon is gonna do the most amount of damage, which means out of that list I just mentioned, pick whichever Mega you have that is the most powerful. Doesn't even matter if it's powered up to Mega level three. It really matters more what its actual level is. So let's say you have a Gardevoir at level 50, definitely Mega Gardevoir throw her in there. Now that you've got your Pokemon team sorted, you're going to need an IRL team to take down Mega Garchomp. Unless you have some really powerful Pokemon, this is going to be a hard one to solo. So you're going to want at least a few other people raiding with you to take down Mega Garchomp. If you have some local friends, definitely get together. Definitely do party play before you start raiding. That's going to give you that party power on your charged moves. And the more people you have in your party, not only is that party power going to charge up quicker, but that means you're going to have more people using those boosted charge attacks. And that's it's just going to take Mega Garchomp down way faster, netting you more Mega Energy. If you don't have any friends that play Pokemon Go, then I would suggest looking on Discord, Reddit, Facebook groups. You can, of course, also check Campfire, which is Niantic's app for organizing community events. Sites like that, you can put in your town name and Pokemon Go and usually find a group where people organize raid walks for days like these and go around in a big group. The bigger your group, the quicker Mega Garchomp is going to go down, the more Mega Energy you are going to get. It also means you're going to have the highest chance of being able to use all of your daily passes because if you're spending a lot of time taking down each raid and then catching after each raid, there's a good chance, especially if you bought the $5 ticket, that you're not going to be able to use all those raid passes in the three hour window. 14 raids is a lot to get through in three hours. You're going to want to do that as quickly as possible. If you didn't buy the ticket, you'll probably be able to get through those five or six fairly easily. Okay. I've got one last tip for you, and this one isn't really specific to Mega Garchomp. It works for any raids in general. That is stacking the daily raid pass. If you don't use your daily raid pass from the day before, it will carry over to the next day. You can use it that day, and then you can spin a photo disc at a gym and get a second free daily pass. You can, however, only hold one free daily pass at a time. So you have to do a raid and then spin a disc, and then you'll get your second pass. That also means you can't stack up multiple days in a row. So you can only stack one, do a raid, get a second one. So for this this event, spin the photo disc on Friday, don't do a raid, save that pass till Saturday. Then on Saturday, do a Mega Garchomp raid, use that pass from Friday. Then you can get your regular one for Saturday, plus all the special event ones, giving you one extra raid pass, one extra Mega Garchomp raid, a little bit extra Mega Garchomp energy. All right, everybody, that's it for my tips and tricks. If I missed anything, please leave it down in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more Pokemon Go content. Happy raiding, and we'll see you in the next one. Power to the, power to the people. Got something incredibly funky.